morning, everybody. So the choir is making its way up here because they are going to do our call to worship. Dance in the back, and, and I don't know why I didn't catch this when I proofed the bulletin. But anyway, on Wednesday it says 7 p.m. Thanksgiving service. No, we're not having a Thanksgiving service. Um, so, since we're not having a Thanksgiving service, you'll notice um, right after the prayer of the day, we're going to be singing Give Thanks. And um, it says Trinity Worship Co Choir, but the reason we put the words in there is we invite you to sing along and as we give thanks, looking forward to um, Thanksgiving uh, Thursday. And I wanted to um, mention something. It may, because it may seem kind of crazy to you that um, the choir is singing, and right now COVID is really ramping up again. Um, but everybody that's in the choir, we have to wear masks, and it's um, really, <laughs> which is a challenge. So if you can't, we're trying to enunciate, but we're going through the mask, so please understand. Um, and we've all been vaccinated. Um, and in light of the fact that the pandemic is uh, ramping up, um, we do strongly encourage you wearing masks. It's kind of a love your neighbor kind of a thing. And um, also to get vaccinated. Um, I've, I've gotten my third. Some of you have gotten your booster. How about your booster? Shot on the same day. How does that feel? All right. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> you guys are going to have to part the waters in just a second here because I'm going to introduce Pastor Kristen. And if you didn't read her little intro in um, the newsletter a couple weeks ago, I'm going to read it to you. I'm a farm kid from Adams who spent a lot of time milking cows, baling hay, and picking rock. And by the way, Kristen Anderson, how can you get any more Scandinavian? That's <laughs> um, my parents were also school bus drivers for Southland. I graduated from Austin Community College and Augustana College in Sioux Falls. Graduated from Luther Seminary in St. Paul. Had served churches in New York, St. Cloud, Wasika, and Janesville. And also served as one of the chaplains at the St. Cloud Hospital. I was very a Habitat for Humanity, Bethlehem Inn in Wasika, and led five teams to New Orleans to help clean up my leisure time. I love music. I play piano and organ. I'm a diehard scrapbooker and enjoy spending time with my two beloved and spoiled cats, Odie and Lena. <laughs> Let's welcome our Pastor Kristen. Thank you. 
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ. 
As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Psalms number 93, and we read responsibly. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. My ear is the sound of many waters. testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Revelation, beginning at verse 4. Grace to you and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who lives, who loves us, and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierce the veil. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. The word of the Lord. And this time we are excited to have our children's lesson. They have a long way to run down here, don't they? Want <laughs> <laughs> to be young and have that much energy, huh? <laughs> Welcome. I also used to sit up in our church balcony. That was my favorite place to sit. Well, good morning to all of you. I am so delighted that you could gather. My name is Pastor Kristen Anderson, and I am your new bridge pastor here at Trinity Lutheran. I look forward to having the opportunity to get to know you as the weeks and days and months unfold here. Um, normally, when I do um, children's lessons, I have an object that we use to talk about um, for the sermon. However, I don't know if you knew this, but this week I moved from Wasika and Jadenville over to Austin and here to Hayfield into my office. And so all of my stuff is still in boxes of way, shape, or form. In fact, for the hip-hop this morning, I had to come here early and grab one out of the front pew. Um, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon, I'll, everything will be unpacked. But finding things was a little bit of a challenge for this first day. So today's, today will be one of the few ch uh, children's lessons that we will not have an object that will start as our lesson. Okay, I have a question instead to start off with you today. And that question is this one. What is your favorite holiday? Christmas and Halloween. Christmas and Halloween aren't holidays. Easter, yep. Easter is pretty special too, isn't it? Christmas, yep. Um, either Christmas or Thanksgiving. Christmas or Thanksgiving, okay. Christmas. Christmas, yep. That's a pretty common one, isn't it? And a pretty good one. And not that far away anymore, is it? No. How many of you guys have put up Christmas lights already at home? Yeah, you're seeing a lot more come out before the My weather turns cold. She set up all of her Christmas decorations. 
Christmas. Very cool. That's fun putting them up, isn't it? Yeah, I always like taking out the Christmas lights and praying very hard that they work because they're not that much fun when they don't, are they? Yeah. Well, what if I told you that my very favorite holiday is New Year's Eve? Isn't that different? It is kind of different. What kinds of things do we do uh, as a society on New Year's Eve? What do you like to do? Stay up. It's exciting, right? Because it means something really good is about to happen, right? So you have to stay up. You don't want to miss it, right? Okay. What else do we do on New Year's Eve? We stay up. Have a party. You have a party. That's right. It's good to be together with family and friends. As I told you, a lot of what we're doing here today in church is just like New Year's Eve. Would you look at me and think, wow, that's kind of strange, Pastor, huh? But actually, today is what we call the New Year's Eve of the church's liturgical calendar. Today is the last Sunday in the life of the church calendar. Next Sunday, we start a brand new calendar year in the church calendar, and that is Advent. So that's a beginning, a new year that we look forward to celebrate. Just like New Year's Eve, we flip the calendar, we stay up till midnight, and it's so good that we have to have a party and invite people to come, to worship, to celebrate, because... New life for us is just around the corner. And just like you do in your homes, we're going to have the opportunity in just a little while to eat because Jesus himself invites us to come to the table to eat and drink until our souls have been satisfied, our hunger is filled, and our souls are um, uh, satiated and just um, filled with great abundance. And so today is the New Year's Eve of the church's liturgical calendar. I bet you didn't think you could go home today and say Happy New Year's Eve, did you? No. <laughs> no, I didn't either. <laughs> I didn't either. But it's a wonderful thing for us to remember because so many times in life, we think that endings are always sad or hard. Like when something ends, or somebody, let, let's say a best friend of yours moves away, that's a sad thing, isn't it? Because you know that you don't know when you're gonna see them again next, right? But we're reminded today that this ending of the calendar is not all that there is. Because God has a plan of working through even times of endings to focus our eyes to what is still yet to come. And we do that on New Year's Eve. We do that in church on this Christ the King Sunday. When we look to next week, when we celebrate the Advent and we begin that preparation for Jesus' birth. New life is coming. And so today we give thanks for that gift of new life. And we remember that whenever in times in life when we feel sad because something is coming to an end, we, remind, we are reminded that God always provides us with that gift of life, that there is always more still to come because God has given us that promise always. And so today we celebrate Christ as king. Um, how many of you would like to be king for a day? That would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? What kind of things do kings like to do? If you were a king, what would you do? Sit in the throne. Sit in the throne. Oh, that would be pretty cool, huh? And, yeah. And rule. And rule. Yeah. That means anything that you say would go. How cool would that be, huh? Is that while Jesus is king, instead of sitting on the throne and telling everybody what to do, Jesus came to show us a different way to serve. And that way is the way that brings new life that we celebrate as a service. It is the way of sharing what we have with one another. It is the way of being kind to one another. It is the way that brings life and joy into the community. So again, today is a very special day. Not only is it the end of the calendar, but we also celebrate Christ the King. And in just a couple of weeks, we will celebrate the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem. So these are some pretty big, important weeks in the church life, isn't it? Lots going on, and it will be nonstop until at least after Christmas. Um, we have lots to do and lots to talk about. All right, let us uh, uh, pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks because we know even today that we, as we celebrate endings, we are reminded of your help 
Help us, Lord, to focus on you, that you came to be our king, and that you help us show a rule kind. Help us to share. Help us to sacrifice and show our love for one another as we follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so much for coming up front. Okay, the Alleluia that's in your book, actually it's on page 151. So if you want to attend it in front of your book. And this is a familiar one, but why don't we stand and say the gospel works. Page 151. I know I did. 
It was like watching a fairy tale come to life before your own eyes. Fire or People magazine because you wanted to catch the scoop about the latest happenings in the royal family. Can be just as fascinated with power and with the majesty that surrounds loyalty. But I think one of the reasons why has to do with our perception of what it means to be royalty. In our minds, being a king means you can do anything. You can picture it, can't you? People coming into your presence, bowing down to them. When's the last time that anyone bowed down to you when you entered into a room? Talk about feeling important. We think that it would be a life where people would respect you and wait on you and follow your every command. What's not to like about this kind of lifestyle? Is it any wonder why we even are fascinated by such things? Today, however, on this Christ the King Sunday, we talk about a king and a kingdom of a very different kind. Today, we lift up Christ as our king, but it is a king like no other we have encountered. For instead of a throne, he received a cross. Instead of a crown, he received thorns placed upon his head. Instead of servants to wait on him and seek out his every need, he ruled by becoming a servant himself, by seeking out those who were lost, those who felt alone, those who were frightened, in order that he might serve them with a crown of mercy and kindness. Truly, this is a kingdom like no other. The question that we need to ask ourselves today is this. What does this king, what does Christ's kingdom have to do with us? Does this festival of Christ the King speak to us as American Christians living in the 21st century? Of course the answer is yes. This particular day has everything to do with us. We need to keep in mind is that this question about kingship is a crucial one for us as Christians. In today's Jesus before his death, are you, he asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And we need to realize that Pilate's question, a lonely important. In fact, it literally was a matter of life and death. Did you know that back in Jesus' day, for one to admit to having any other ruler but Caesar was an act of treason and therefore was an act punishable by death. And this was true not only of Jesus' time, but also later on in the history of the early church as well. In our second reading for today from the book of Revelation, it was written during the time of the Roman emperor Domitian. During his reign, he required all citizens at least once a year to bow down before him, worship him, and call him Lord and God. For Jews and Christians alike who worship one God and one Lord, they could not do that without betraying their faith. And so many in those years during the book of Revelation were put to death or martyred for their faith. So the question of who is your king was incredibly important to them. In a very different world. But that doesn't mean that question is no less important. For while we are indeed fortunate enough to live in a land where we enjoy unprecedented political freedoms, we still face forces in our own lives which see consumerism, materialism, alcoholism, and drug abuse, cycles of poverty and violence and despair. And these are just a few to name. Pilate's question to Jesus, who are you? Are you the king? Is the very question that faces each and every one of us on a daily basis. Is God the ruler of our lives? 
Or do we bow down to something or to someone other than God and allow that person or that thing to rule over us? To answer that question, all we have to do is take a good look in the mirror. Or better yet, take a moment, take out your checkbook and look at how we've spent our money in the past year. I do that as a spiritual practice once a year and it is always eye-opening for me to see what I have valued in that past year. Pilate's question then, though it is in a very different context, is no less real and no less important for us today. In fact, it is so important that it shows up as the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. The good news is that Christ the King Sunday isn't just about Pilate's question. It is also, and more importantly, about the answer that Jesus gives. And in that answer, Jesus doesn't focus on Pilate and on his mistaken notions to his question. Instead, Jesus replies in this way, My kingship is not of this world. And with that answer, Jesus invites our eyes to turn heavenward. He lifts our eyes to a God whose ways are not our ways. He turns our eyes to a God who loves us so much and so deeply that he would even send his son to die in order that all people, people like Pilate and people like you and like me, might be given that gift of new life. The life of freedom lived in the community of God. That is what we celebrate. And that is what we turn our eyes to in the coming weeks as we begin the season of Advent. And we look forward to the coming of our King. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to sing together a powerful hymn. It is an Advent hymn. But I also find it equally true for this Christ the King Sunday as well. It's called Soon and Very Soon. And it goes like this. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. What an incredible gift to be able to sing and praise God in this way. To look forward with eager eyes to see the coming of the long-awaited Messiah. Today we will sing this powerful hymn, and we will do so knowing that Christ our King, the King is coming soon. We will sing it doing so knowing that soon Christ will be born anew, and we will be the awe of his birth. And we will sing this hymn together knowing that one day when we will be called from this very earth, once again Jesus will turn our eyes heavenward. So that we can see that glorious sight of God welcoming us to our heavenly home. I hope today, as you sing this hymn, you sing it with Lutheran gusto. <laughs> but I also hope that you will pay extra close attention to each of the verses. Because it is those verses that gives us a picture of what life in God's kingdom is all about. It talks about no more crime there, no more dying there, and there is more good news to be found there. For God's kingdom, though it is not of this world, it does begin here. For it is on this earth that we are given the gifts of the kingdom. And we experience what our liturgy calls a foretaste of that great feast to come. In the second reading from Revelation, in verse 5, it says, Christ made us to be a kingdom, priest to serve our God. Basically, that's Bible speak for helping share the love of Jesus with everyone. And that is what priests do. We are called to speak of Jesus. We are called to make him known through word and through sacrament, through teaching, through acts of service and acts of charity. As a pastor, that is my call. But in holy baptism, you too, it is also your call. 
Together, it is our calling. Remember way back at the beginning of this sermon, I mentioned that one of the themes today was unity of sin. Our unity together is found in the calling that God gives us. On this side of heaven, exciting job to do together. And it will be in those acts, those acts of reaching out to one another, and sharing the good news of Jesus' love. It is in those daily acts that we will catch a glimpse that heaven will be like. Soon and very soon, we are going to see that king. Today, as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday, may God help it to be so. May that be our song of praise in every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. For Christ is King.
Give them strength and the power and the promise of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join in their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are our hope and our strength. We entrust to you all for whom we have prayed. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. time we share in our offering of our gifts and our tithes, a reminder of the abundance with which God blesses us. However, because of COVID restrictions, the offering plates are located in the narthex, and again, we want to say thank you. Um, this is an incredible season of our, our holiday schedule. It is a reminder to us that we celebrate the harvest of abundance, which has been brought home. We say thanks to all who are farming and who have brought that harvest in, and we give thanks and look forward to returning to God the first fruits of what God has already given with us. We continue with the service of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is ready, and all are welcome. I would invite the assistants to please come forward at this time. Communion today will be here by the altar. Come, the table is ready, and all are indeed welcome.
first song is the um, leader.